Greetings, royal family. It saddens me that Ralph Angel actually broke up with us. We were rooting for you, Ralph Angel. We were all rooting for you. How? I, see, this is all y'all fault. Y'all that wanted him to get back with D Darla so bad, he done broke up with us on a play date. Y'all feeling all right, royal family? It's Queen Sugar time. I'm back, obviously. Got notes, got my red pen, so let's get into it. So the episode opens up with little Micah and his girlfriend Kiki going to the prom. Kudos to whoever is in charge of wardrobe for this episode because Kiki's dress, Micah's jacket, his hair, Kiki's hair, they looked so beautiful. They looked so cute. I was here for it. Very age appropriate. Micah's jacket was sharp. It complimented Kiki's dress uh, very well. Okay? And that completes this episode of Fashion Corner. So Micah uh, and Kiki, they're going to the prom. You know, Charlie, she's excited. She's taking hundreds of pictures. Uh, they're all at Charlie's house. Nova is there. Aunt Vi is there. Uh, Hollywood is there and of course, you know, Charlie's there. So they're all, you know, uh, just excited. They're just excited at the moment. They toast Nova poured um, apple cider vinegar. I mean, not apple cider vinegar, um, apple cider and little uh, flute glasses and they all toasted. And if you notice, <laughs> Aunt, Vi, Aunt Vi had her bottle of Evian water, honey. Guess she didn't want anything to do with Nova whatsoever. Uh, real shady. And uh, Micah reveals that he is going to Harvard. He got accepted to Harvard. He's going to Harvard. So, you know, Charlie's very proud. Uh, Hollywood makes, um, what did he say? He made a statement saying that um, Micah's going to be the next guy who, I forgot his name that quick, who basically uh, goes around and um, works with celebrities, revealing their ethnicity and their heritage and their family trees and things like that. So Nova called the guy's name and then um, Vi makes a shady comment like, Lord knows we don't need any more uprooting of any trees, leaves, or anything like that. We've had enough. To which Nova kind of like, you know, she kind of like felt a little burnt by Aunt Vi's statement and everyone laughed it off. So they're off to the prom. Um, Charlie's taking pictures, wave, you know, hey, wave. He's, they just want to get out of there. So they're going to meet up with their friends at the hotel for some festivities before they head to the prom. So you see Hollywood and Vi getting ready to leave. So they're handing the keys over to Charlie. Um, Cause Charlie's doing her little uh, press uh, conference or what have you uh, at Aunt Vi's diner. So she just tells her, you know, you need anything, let me know. Everything's ready and set up for your walkthrough. Um, and she leaves. She's like, okay, baby. And she leaves. Remember, Nova is there. Nova is sitting on the couch with her head down. Aunt Vi and Hollywood leave saying nothing to Nova. Didn't, Aunt Vi didn't even look in her direction. She acted like she wasn't there. Um, I thought it was funny because that's something that I would totally do. I would act like you're not even there. But it's just like, darn. But it seems like Nova is used to it now because she knows, listen, Aunt Vi is just not ready to talk to you. So I thought that was, um, that was funny. Now in this scene, it leaves Charlie and Nova. So they're talking about a little bit about the, the campaign and Nova gives Charlie some information in a book. And Nova is basically saying that, you know, she has some information, pertinent information that could help, uh, with, you know, Charlie win the race. It dawned on me because I'm 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 seeing in the comments of um, certain discussion groups and things like that. You know, where did Nova get this information? I was wondering too when I first watched the episode the first time, and I'm like, mm, is this credible? You know, Charlie even asked her later on in the episode, is this credible and things like that. And I'm like, where the heck did Nova get this information? When I watch, because I watch it two times before I do a review. I watched the second time that scene it dawned on me the book had Nova's name on it you know where Nova got that book from with the information do you remember when Nova went on that television show and that guy revealed that her mother had a is it it wasn't her mother's sister her mother's first cousin remember uh, cousin Martha 
remember before she went out on stage, uh, on the stage or on the set, the lady came back in, um, I guess she was a producer, came back in Nova's dressing room. And she said that, you know, I want to go over something with you. We have information, more information about your family. To which Nova said, no, I'm not going to discuss my mother. We can discuss my mother's side of the family, but I'm not discussing anything about my father's side of the family. But it was a book, the same book that she handed Charlie. Um, so basically, uh, the producer, you know, said, hey, you know, she doesn't want to discuss her father's family and left the room. Remember that episode? That's when she went on that show and she found out that she had a cousin. Her mother's first cousin was still alive. Um, so, yeah. So I'm assuming, you know, it was like one of those genealogy shows or what have you where they um, find out your lineage and any living relatives and your ancestors and so on and so forth. So that is, it, it, it didn't dawn on me the first time I watched it, but the second time I watched the show, I it just... Oh, yes. Ah, right? Okay. Anyway, so we're still questioning the validity of this information, though, because it's not like, I guess it's being perceived that Nova was the one that did research to get this information, but no, it came from that television show. If I'm wrong, which I don't think, because she kind of said something, but anyway, whatever. You tell me what you think, if you kind of caught that. Go back and listen to what she said when she's handing Charlie the book. Anyway... Uh, next episode. So you see Ra and Disha, okay? Their kids are on a play date, um, and she's talking to Ra, and she just says, uh, you know, are you okay? Is there anything that I need to know? And I don't even remember what he said in the doorway, because I was just like, he's about to break up with this girl. But that's not the scene where he basically breaks up with her. So she kind of, they're kind of talking and things like that, um, watching the kids play, and um, she just basically turns it around and says, well, let me get these kids some snacks before they get unruly. So you kind of see her walk off. Um, the next scene is Charlie and Nova. They're in the diner and they're practicing um, for her, you know, practicing her speech. So Nova's kind of helping her and, and things like that. And uh, Nova just tells her, like, you know, you got to be prepared. And, and uh, I did give you... Well, Charlie seems to think that the information that Nova gave her um, as far as the Landry's uh, heritage or what have you is enough. And she also says that, you know, my life is an open book, right? You know, I thought that was really cute because it's a little dig. Like, you see, you still put my, my business out there. I'm not going to let you off that easy. So Charlie's saying that to Nova, like, my life is an open book. I don't have anything to be ashamed of. And Nova makes a good point. She says, but theirs is not, meaning the Landry's, Boudreaux's, whatever. Their life is not an open book. You know, yes, your life is kind of like out there because of my book, but theirs isn't. So she's just trying to prep Charlie for, you know, when they start throwing things at, Ch at Charlie. She's trying to just prep her, which I don't I think, are they good now? Like, I, I asked this in my... Not last review, the one before that. Does it seem like they're good? I, I think it's a good idea that they are working together. I did pose a question in my last review. Is uh, Charlie only using Nova? Because she wants, you know, Charlie wants to win at all costs, right? Or is there really some healing that has taken place between the two sisters and they're just kind of like genuinely helping one another because they, you know, both love each other. So... I don't know. I don't want to say that Charlie's motives are questionable. However, you know, we did see in earlier seasons that Charlie is willing to do whatever it takes to win. She is, she always wants to be a winner. So let me know what you think about that too. So moving along, oh, Nova gets a, um, a text message from Calvin because Calvin is coming in to celebrate her birthday. Her birthday already passed, but he's coming. So, you know, Charlie tells her, go on, you know, you know, go have fun, freshen up, light some incense, change the sheets, you know, don't hurt them, girl. So I thought that was cute, a cute exchange between between the two of them. Um, so Jacob, Jacob, Charlie is there. So Jacob ends up, Boudreaux ends up walking into the diner. And, you know, Charlie's like, oh, now you're resorting to spying on me and things like that. So he, he walked into the diner and he kind of told her, he basically told her that she should drop out of the race, to which it ticks Charlie off, you know. Um, he, he let her know that, you know, it's not a matter of, 
who is going to win? You know, Charlie's just like, look, I, I've been avoiding your calls. I don't want to talk to you. You know, you're my um, opponent. So, you know, may the best man, kind of like may the best man win, but he kind of breaks it to her that the election is already in the bag. Like he's been informed that he al already won the election. Typical politics, you know, this show mirrors a lot of what we see going on today. Like just what we see going on socially. And he doesn't even run, really, he doesn't want to even run for this, uh, this position. You know, it's like his mother is making him do it. And he alluded to that, um, later on in the episode, but it's just the election is, they already told me that I already, that I already won, you know? And like I said, that reflects a lot of what goes on politically today. Moving along. All right, so we see Aunt Vi and Hollywood. Okay, so Aunt Vi and Hollywood. Now, throughout the entire episode, this storm is like raging. You know, it's raining. Everybody's kind of stuck in doors throughout the entire uh, episode. So Aunt Vi and uh, Hollywood are just getting in, you know, and he's opening up his packages and things like that. And he's telling Aunt Vi that he is, he's got a helmet for her because Hollywood bought a bike, a motorcycle. He wants to ride with Aunt Vi so bad, but she's not having it. So they're, they're having, you know, a little bit of dialogue. And he, he jokingly says to her, you know, you're, you're so boring, baby. And she says, boring, really? She said, uh-uh. She said, Alexa, what did she say? Alexa, play my love songs or, or my love playlist or something like that. First of all, who bought Aunt Vi and Alexa? <laughs> Aunt Vi had, got a, had an eye watch last week uh, or the week before that. Now she got an Alexa. Aunt Vi, you hip, girl. So all of a sudden, these, these you know, these jams, these sexy love jam comes on, okay? Aunt Vi starts dancing on Hollywood. Aunt Vi opens her blouse. Okay, you can see her pretty, her, her, her bustier or her bra, her Lane Bryant bra. You better go ahead, Aunt Vi. I told y'all Aunt Vi is back. When she got that weight off of her shoulders, when she revealed what she revealed to Darla, it was like, a, 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 I was being dramatic, but it's true, like bond, like she's out of bondage. That's what was holding her up sexually with her husband. That's what was hindering her emotionally from being connected to her husband or, or anyone else. Um, you see that she was kind of checking in with Charlie now because she is privy to Charlie running. She knows that Charlie's running for office, but you know, she giving her the diner as her space. Cause you know, she always checks on the kids. Um, so yeah, I just thought that that moment was so beautiful. It's like they're back to normal and she is coping with her pain a lot better. You know, she, she, she had to go through that. So she's dancing on Hollywood, you know, like I said, bra exposed, she's rubbing on his bald head and you can tell that Hollywood is loving every single minute of it. Okay. It's like, yes. My baby's back, you know? So I thought that that was so beautiful. I love that scene. Kiki and Micah, um, they're at the hotel. And again, they were meeting up with their friends and they were, it, I think they were drinking alcohol. Mm. But anyway, so not a lot. They weren't drunk or wasted. All of them looked beautiful. All of these kids that were going to prom, real Af some of them were real, their garments were real Afrocentric. And I loved it. Uh, their hair looked beautiful, appropriate, you know, because some of these, some of these people during prom season, you, it makes you wonder, like, what the heck were their parents thinking? But whatever, I, I thought that was a good visual. Uh, visual, they're showing young, t young kids in a positive light, like you know, not all ratchet and and crazy. So I, that was really refreshing. So during when they first met up, they were talking about uh, rooms, and one of Micah's friends said that when he went to check in, cause his name was Malik and you know, Micah is Micah. So he went to check in, he discovered that there was another private room that was booked for later on as well. So all of them are like, Ooh, you know, they're and Micah felt extremely uncomfortable um, because he didn't want to make it seem as though he was pressuring Kiki to do something after their prom. And he later revealed to her, like, you know, he forgot to cancel it. Um, and he does still doesn't want her to feel pressured or anything like that. So 
they're sitting together in this seat and they're they're talking so he invites her to dance you know they're in the hotel room dancing um and their friend he, he just basically lets her know look i'm sorry you know i could tell you felt a little bit uncomfortable and she was like i'm not mad or anything like that you know she she revealed to him that she's been on birth control for six weeks yes Yes, yes, positive, positive, responsible, responsible, because she's not, she's, she's a strong character though, that Kiki, she's got a good head on her shoulders, she's, she's always been very sure of herself throughout uh, all the seasons, but how freaking responsible is that, you know, Hollywood told Micah early in the episode, you know, just be careful, young blood, you know what I mean, be careful, you know, no, most parents don't want children to engage in sex in their teens, in high school and things like that. But sometimes it's inevitable. It's going to happen. You have self-assured young adults, teens that really feel like they know what they want or whatever. But to, And also to see her so responsible to get on the pill. I was like, this show is just freaking perfect. Like that sends such a great message, you know? Yes. Some people preach abstinence. That's fine. But um, let's also preach, you know, birth control and safety precautions. So I thought that that was a great message. So, um, yeah, she revealed that she was on birth control and I was here for it. I think that that's just responsible, right? Like, anyway, moving along. So Ra and Disha are in the kitchen. And I mean, yeah, Ra and Disha are in the kitchen. The kids are playing. You remember, it's raining, so they had to come back in the house. So, <laughs> Disha's not stupid. You know, um, she knows something is going on, and she says to him, I thought that this was smart. Remember, she's a lawyer, so she's a smart girl. So, Disha says to Ra, you know, how's it been, been working? Like, I hope you're staying dry. You know, how are you staying dry, or I hope you're staying dry. Have you been working out in the fields in these on your farm in the rain so chess move so instead of where have you been for the past two weeks i ain't hear from you chess move so he says no you know i ain't even really been um tending to my farm for the past two weeks you know uh disha i ain't been all the way honest with you um i've been with darla for the past two weeks because she had a relapse so her response was oh my god like is she going to be okay? Like, how's Blue taking this? Right? Isn't she just great? Blue doesn't know, he says to her. Um, yeah, I have a problem with that, but I'll get into that later. So Blue doesn't know. So he, he basically admits to her that he's still in love with Darla. Ugh. He says, when she hurts, I hurts. When she bleeds, I bleeds. And... Disha thought that, I don't think Disha saw that coming. I think Disha thought that maybe he just has a lot on his hands right now as far as, you know, helping with Darla, uh, being there for her and, you know, taking care of Blue. But he took it a step further and he basically admitted to her that he's still in love with her. And Disha handled it like a self-assured, beautiful woman. She just woman, you know, she said, that is what that is one of the most beautiful things that I've ever heard a man say, you know. Unfortunately, you know, you're not talking, you're not saying it to me and she told him that she has too much confidence and too much love for herself to play second fiddle, you know, and she definitely wishes him well and she wishes Darla and Blue well as well and she says, you know, she'll work something out with the kids, you know. I thought that was a mature route. Now, I was hurt by this because, of course, we liked Disha. Now, see, here it is, Ralph Angel. For two weeks, you've been taking care of Darla. Darla ain't seen Blue in two weeks. Ralph Angel, you already don't have any employees tending to your farm. You have abandoned your farm for the past two weeks. It just reeks of irresponsibility. And I understand that he loves Darla. We all know that. And we can debate about this until Jesus comes back, okay? 
I personally do not feel that Darla and Ralph Angel should be together right now, if at all, because Darla has yet to call her sponsor. Darla has yet to, she's been out of work, she said later on in the episode. It's all bad. Why haven't you called your sponsor? She did say she called Darlene. Is Darlene her sponsor? I don't know. But it's just, whatever, Ralph Angel. You can do whatever it is that you want to do. He is extremely loyal to Darla, which is good. Um, even though he is loyal to her, I think that he should... He should be loyal to himself too. I don't know. It's just so weird, you know? And everyone is saying that he's doing the right thing. But who is he doing the right thing for? Because is he doing the right thing for Darla? Or is he doing the right thing for himself? Listen, there's only two episodes left of this show. And I am curious to see how they are going to resolve a lot of these questions that I'm sure all of us have in two freaking episodes. So whatever. So, oh, Nova and Calvin. So they were supposed to go out to dinner for her birthday. And because of the rain, he stayed and he cooked. They were talking about their relationship and... They were talking about how they felt when, I guess, when they when they first were together, when he was married and stuff like that. <sighs> Here's what I'll say about this. Calvin, I hope you're prepared to possibly get your heart broken. Because we all know that Nova is a free spirit. Remember when Nova went to go and visit Cousin Martha... She said that you have a spirit just like your mother. Rewind. We know in the first or second season, I don't remember, we know a little bit about Trudy, which is Nova's mother, who was a free spirit. Remember, she did not want to be tied down to Ernest. She didn't, she wanted to do her. She wanted Ernest to do her. So if cousin Martha can see the same spirit in Nova, then we and we see Nova's behaviors, her her many relationships. Nova, I don't know if she has a fear of commitment, but she is a free spirit. So it is really scary to know that Calvin wants to move back to um, St. Louis. I think that's what he said. He basically wants them to be under the same roof. It seems like he wants to marry her and wants Nova to play step mammy. I don't know. I don't know. Nova, mm, I don't know. I don't think Nova is the settling down type. Not that she can't be, but she just doesn't. Uh -uh. I don't see Nova being tied down. Uh, yeah, that's going to be very, very. Isn't this interesting? Anyway, I, 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 anyway, I digress. So he, yeah, he basically says that he wants to, you know, wants them to live under the same roof because their schedules uh, conflict. You know, he has the kids every other weekend. Nova has other obligations. You know, she has to go in and out of town. So they realize that their schedules are, are going to conflict. So, you know, after their little lovemaking rendezvous, you know, he basically said that he wants to move back to um, St. Louis and he wants to take it further with her. I don't know, Nova girl. I don't, I don't know. So Charlie and Jacob. And I wrote, how can I be better? So this is the scene where uh, they're still in the diner and Jacob is basically telling Charlie, you know, he knows his, he's self-assured, he knows his self and he knows where he comes from. I think that's what he said. <laughs> Charlie said, oh, do you? So Charlie plays the recording of when her and Francis were going at it. Remember, Ralph Angel went with her when she went to confront Francis after the mill burned down. And remember, Ralph Angel recorded everything. So Charlie plays the recording and she plays the section uh, of the recording where Francis is basically, you know, dogging um, Charlie, saying that you're nothing but a mulatto gal trying to pass for white and yada, yada, yada. So she plays a small piece of that. And Charlie says, you know, you're still sure about your um your upbringing so they sit down and talk and charlie shows uh jacob 
the book that Nova gave him. And when she opened the book, he said to her, what are you doing with a picture of my great grandmother, whatever her name was, uh, Landry, my great grandma Landry, great, great grandma Landry. And I said, Oh, so they talk, they talk, they talk. Um, and then he says, Okay, yeah, I'll get to Aunt Vi in a minute. Let me just wrap up the whole Charlie thing. So they devise a plan. Like, basically, Charlie tells him, you know, with all of this information that you have, you know, you, you being a white man, I'm paraphrasing, you being a white man, you still don't want to acknowledge the atrocities that, you know, white people have done to black people all throughout American history, you know? And this is when Jacob says, how can I do better? She tells him, without hesitation, drop out of the race. He told her, I can't do that. And he says, you know, when I get in office, we can work together. Charlie's like, nah, nah, nah. I don't want to hear none of that. But at this point, we realize that he cannot drop out of the race. You know, his mother has a stronghold on him and whoever it is that she's working with. So he says what he can do is, he said, the only thing that I can do is he can make himself um, ineligible to be elected, you know, like throwing the election. <laughs> That's right up Charlie's alley, honey. She said, I can totally help you with that. So the next scene, we see Aunt Vi bathing her man, Hollywood. I thought that that was so beautiful. Aunt Vi is back in her element. You know, she's taking care of her big daddy, Hollywood. Um, they were discussing, she's washing his back. He's in the tub. And they're discussing his uh, men's group that he's really adamant about putting together. He wants a safe outlet and a place for... Um, you know, men to come together. Sorry, I'm trying to look at the time. For men to come together so they can basically like be one and express themselves, so on and so forth. So they were just going back and forth talking about, you know, what to name it and stuff like that. And I know Hollywood is so thrilled that his vibe, you know, his uh, is back. So Ra and Darla, they're talking. So Ra and Darla, they're sitting down and they're talking. And again, she took time off of work you know, um, hasn't seen Blue in two weeks. She says she's not ready to see him. Very reminiscent of her behaviors from before, right? Um, Ralph Angel told her, like, please, you know, don't take too long to see him. You know, he's down at her mother's. Um, and he just, again, he told Blue, uh, your mother's not feeling too well. We, we've seen this before. So they're sitting down, they're talking, and they're talk he's talking about how he never stopped loving her and... Just because they're not together doesn't mean he, 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 he stopped caring about her. She's smitten. He says that she he always used to think about her when, you know, hope she got back to her dorm safe. Did she eat today? She smiled. He always said he always prayed for her. She said, I always prayed for you too. Um, you know, again, it's raining. They're indoors. And she says, you know, thanks for, for staying with me. And he brought her soup. And she says to him, you know, I really want you to forgive me. And he said, I told you, like, I already you know, I'm over that. I've already forgiven you. She says, I want you, you, you know, forgive me. Have you forgiven me enough for us to try again? And I say, here we go. Here we go. Try again. You haven't seen your child in two weeks. Ralph Angel ain't been to work in two weeks. You ain't been to work in a week or two. And you worried about getting back together with Ralph Angel and not about seeing your son and explaining to your son, mommy's okay. I'm just going through things right now. Have you even talked to him? He's probably confused and wondering what the heck is going on. Listen, Darla, I'm really starting to think that you are being manipulative intentionally. That, I'm not saying that's the way it is, but that's just the way it looks. You mean to tell me, you, you found out information about the night Blue was conceived, trauma, right? That was very traumatic for you because it just brings old things to the surface and now you have to unpack that you're still unpacking the situation with the book and people at your job and everybody in the town knowing about you know some of your indiscretions right you relapse right drinking Aunt Vi found you in the park wandering and whatnot okay all of these things are going on and you mean to tell me your main concern is trying to get back 
with Ralph Angel, priorities are out of whack. Listen, yes, Ralph Angel is there for Darla. Great. Yes, Ralph Angel told her, I will always have your back. Perfect. We all need support. Ralph Angel is not a professional. He is not a professional. So if Darla relapses a game, what this is all going she's going to look to Ralph Angel to help her because he's always there. And I don't think that Ralph Angel should walk away from her, but I do think that boundaries need to be set and I think that he should dial it back a little bit to force her to reach out to her sponsor, reach out to her program and reach out to the professionals that are trained to help her and not rely on Ralph Angel. Ralph Angel ain't been to that farm, tending to that farm in two weeks. I don't know. You guys can tell me what it is that you think. Um, I think that you are already privy to how I feel. Micah and his friends. I know I'm all over the place because Ralph Angel breaking up with us just really sent me into a tizzy. Micah and his friends are sitting around in the hotel, right? And they're all talking about their future goals and what they're gonna do and where they see themselves five, 10 years, which is inspiring. I like I like to see ambitious young people, you know? You can learn a lot from these young folks. Um, but um, they're all going around. One is saying, you know, within X amount of years, I'm gonna become a lawyer and I'm gonna open up like a special type of bills bond uh, place and it's a shame that people are locked behind bars what because they can't afford a couple of hundred maybe a thousand dollars uh, to bail out another one stated that she wants to open up um, a string of uh, clinic health clinics I think that's what she said um, to help give back to the community Kiki said that she basically sees herself traveling to New York you know um, debuting some of her art in this gallery and that gallery and traveling here and traveling there great they get to micah micah says i don't know and then the room is plagued with silence so everybody's looking around so he's like i don't know you know i i don't know he says i like my photography but who knows maybe i'll just play it safe and end up doing invest investment banking uh or money mark market or something something like that and i thought to myself see i was just saying i don't understand the direction of micah's character like what like what's up maybe maybe who knows maybe season five they'll probably dive more into that but what is that all about like did he feel does he really not know what he wants to do why did he say maybe I'll just end up doing the safe thing and do investment investment banking or or whatever? Is he not? Is he ashamed that he has love for photography, and because all of his other friends are have these big these quote unquote big dreams uh, or goals, and he felt like okay a little bit inferior. Um, it's so interesting the dynamic. Maybe I don't know. I just thought about this. Micah comes from a privileged background, right? And he probably is so used to being kind of like the head man because his father was a basketball player. And he's around these group of kids who, that they could care less about his celebrity, you know what I mean? And they're so smart, they're so witty. Not that Micah isn't smart, but they're so smart, they're so witty. But it just seems like this season, the only thing that Micah has endured is just triumph, 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 getting drunk, you know, getting a tattoo, going to visit his friend uh, in jail, you know, feeling guilty about his friend being in jail, um, finding out that he has a sister, meeting his sister, his parents not being together, him in a relationship with Kiki, again, being, um, finding out that Nova is dating the ex-cop, him being harassed by a cop again. It's like, I wonder, is he gonna is he going to end up like Nova and be like, you know, a social activist? I don't know. I thought that that moment was interesting, y'all. Let what do you guys think? Like, what was that all about? Like, why did he have to say, I love my photography, but I'll probably end up doing something safe like investment banking or maybe because he knows his mother. It could be that. His mother is an overachiever. She was so ecstatic about the fact that he was going to Harvard. And I said to myself, Harvard? 
what does he want to do that that he's going to to Harvard? She didn't even care. She was just ex excited about the fact that he got accepted to Harvard. All right, let me not go on too long. Let me know what you guys think about that. All right, this is I told y'all Charlie was going to be back. She she didn't fell down. She was wallowing a little bit, got drunk, but I said I'm looking forward to her comeback. She calls Nova and says, "Hey girl, turn on the news." She turns the news on, and we see Jacob Boudreau giving his press conference. Jacob Boudreau reveals that Landry Enterprises has basic, uh, he exposed the fact that Landry Enterprises has biased pricing um, structures based on race, and he ordered a full audit. He said he's withdrawing from his press conference or something like that, uh, and he is ordering a uh, full audit on Landry Enterprises and like, I guess, all of their associations. And he wants everybody to know that St. Joe's were one big family. And he revealed that he found out that his great, great grandma or his great, his great grandma. So then that would mean, okay, yeah. Anyway, his great grandmother, something or other Landry is a black woman and is secret, it has been, a secret that she is related to the border loan family and is a member of the border loan family. And baby, Nova was like, oh, okay. She said, you know, this is bold and this is really risky for you and for Jacob. And she says, you know, I guess she was wondering like, it doesn't mean that you're going to win. You know what I mean? You're going to win. Charlie breaks down and says, look, his openly racist white voters, definitely he lost those votes. And the pe any of the people that are black that were going to vote for him will think that he is pandering with his newfound ethnicity, which a lot of politicians do. And they probably won't vote for him. And she said that basically will tilt the election in her favor, tilt the numbers in her favor. Charlie says, Nova says to her, you know, the border loans, the, I mean, not the border loans, the Landry's and the Boudreaux's are not people that you want to tick off, you know, and they don't take well to losing. I knew she was going to say this because I said it before she, she even said it. And she said, and neither am I. And end scene. Let me tell you something about that Charlie boy. I told y'all, she is no joke. And it's, this is like, this fight may open up even more cans of worms that she may not expect. But do I think that Charlie can handle it? Yes. When she was down and out and her mill burned down and she was drinking, I said to myself, I wasn't worried because I said her comeback is going to be sickening. That was genius. I think that that was totally genius. Let me tell you something. Francis... Jacob, your mother is going to roast and fry you. Honey, she is probably somewhere having a stroke, okay? Somewhere having a stroke. And Francis, let me tell you something. I don't know if Sam warned you, but Sam knows that Charlie definitely is a worthy opponent. But Francis, I don't know. You may, you may have bit off more than you could chew. Now, we know that you being this woman of a, you know, certain socioeconomic status, you have connections, but Charlie may not have as much connections as Francis, obviously. Right. But Charlie can get in contact with those connections. And when she finds, Ooh, I wonder, I wish they would have shown a scene of Francis watching Jacob give this press conference, honey. Jacob said he intends to embrace his newfound heritage. <laughs> Francis is going to have kittens. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to say that this was the best episode of the entire season. I don't hear anything about season five, but that's okay. We still got two more episodes to go. Make sure you guys get down in those comments go off in those comments because there is a lot a lot a lot to talk about and to unpack what do we think about nova and uh charlie i mean calvin what do you think about um 
Charlie, you, are you scared for her? Do you think she can handle it? We still don't know what secret it is that Aunt Vi has with Sam Landry that she called him and says, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm basically telling you to call this off. Remember, she said that. What's up with that? But see, in season two, Aunt Vi, Aunt Vi got more secrets than the CIA. My goodness. Aunt Vi alluded to the fact that there was some connection with the, um, with the border loans and the Landry's and the Boudreaux's. If I'm not mistaken, I think she said the Landry's and the Boudreaux's owned slaves and those slaves were of the border loan descent. So, you know, there had to be some, you know, interracial relations there, you know, that's just how it's been throughout history. But anyway, I'm rambling. Get that in the comments. We got a lot to discuss. I'll meet you guys down there. Make sure you thumbs up this video. Be sure to go back and check out my other Queen Sugar reviews as well as my other content. If you like what you see, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. We are growing this royal family and we want you to come along for the ride. Royal family, get down in the comments. I love you for watching. Until next time, peace.